Hi, in this tutorial, I'll introduce you to WebPlus and show you how to start a new site using one of the professionally designed theme layouts. When WebPlus opens, you'll be greeted by the Startup Wizard. Here, you have the option to start a new site, access additional content, open recent projects, or to view the tutorials and other support materials. The quickest way to get started is to use one of the design templates. In the dialog, the templates are split into two categories, theme layouts and pro templates. The pro templates are a complete website solution, and there is a wide range of templates to suit every need available to buy on serif.com. The theme layouts are more generic. I'll select one of these now. In the colour scheme list, you can select a different scheme. The Pages Preview updates to reflect the scheme change. If you don't like the scheme you've chosen when you open the project file, you can always change it at a later date. All of the template pages are selected by default. For now, I just want two pages. I can either click each checkbox to deselect individual pages, or I can deselect all, and then select the ones that I want. To start designing, I click Open. Before I start adapting the layout, I'll introduce the workspace. The home page is displayed in the centre of the workspace. The main toolbar and context toolbar is at the top. You'll find commonly used tools and shortcuts on the toolbars to the left. Next to these, you'll find the How To, Text Styles, Quick Build and Assets tabs. On the right, you'll find the Main Design, Formatting and Navigation tabs and at the bottom are the hint line and the zoom toolbar. When you first create your project file, it's a good idea to save it straight away so that you can come back to it at any time. Just remember that this isn't the same as publishing it as a website. You may also want to save the asset pack if prompted to do so. I'll now preview the site in a browser to get a better feel for how it will look when it's published. Notice the navigation bar at the top that allows site visitors to get around your site. Both pages contain elements that we can update with our own content. The home page contains a slider. This can be updated too, but I'll look at this in another tutorial. For now, I'll close the preview so that I can update some of the content. The first thing I want to do is edit the placeholder text on the home page with my actual content. With the pointer tool selected, I simply click inside the text frame and then drag across the text to select it. Then, I just type my new text. If needed, I can resize the text frame by dragging on the bounding box handles. I can also change the size and formatting of the text using the text context toolbar and the colours using either the toolbar or the Swatches or Colours tabs. It's even possible to get the text to fit the frame by selecting the Auto Fit option on the Context toolbar. Finally, I'll edit the text created on top of the pink cloud shape. If I select it, you can see that two buttons are displayed beneath the object. This means that the object is placed on a master page. This is a design page that is shared between multiple pages to keep your design consistent. If I click the Edit on Master Page button, I'm taken to the master page. I can now edit the text as before. I'll also edit the copyright text at the bottom of the page. Now, if I select the home page again by double clicking on the Entry in the Site tab, you can see that the page has updated. If I double click to select and view the About Us page, you can see that the text has updated here as well. I have a few more things to do to finish the text on this page. First, I want to delete the unwanted text frame above the heading. I select the edge of the frame so that the border changes to a solid outline and then press the Delete key. I want to add a heading above the text frame on the right. First, I'll select it and move it down to make room. Next, 
I click the text frame tool on the quick build tab. Notice that when I move the cursor in line with the existing text frame, dynamic guides appear to help it line up. To place the frame, I just click and drag. On release, the frame is placed and I can add and format my text. I'll now place some pictures on the page. The template page already contains a picture frame. These are really useful, as they make it easy to place pictures at any size or shape without changing the aspect ratio. Just double click inside the frame, and in the dialog, browse the new picture. Select it, and click Open. This portrait picture doesn't quite display in the frame in the way that I want. By selecting the picture, I can adjust the position of the image by using the tools on the picture frame toolbar. I can also add a new picture frame. On the Quick Build tab, I hold down the CTRL key and then click the Picture tool. I can now position the Picture tool cursor and click and drag to place a frame at the size I want. Once placed, I just need to add a picture to it. This time, I'll use the Assets tab. To add pictures to the tab, I click the Add button. In the dialog, I can browse the pictures that I want to add and select them then click Open. The pictures are now displayed in the Assets tab. To use a picture, I just drag it out of the tab and drop it onto the page or an existing frame. The Assets tab has also been pre-populated with the assets from the theme layout. The different asset types are held within various categories. This even includes entire page layouts. To add another same level page, I can drag my chosen thumbnail onto the left or rightmost side of the page. When a large arrow appears, I release the mouse button. The page is created either before or after the current page. To add a new child page, I drag the page thumbnail to the bottom of the current page. The pages can then be customised as before. If I preview the site again, you'll see all the changes in place. I now have the beginnings of a website. That's all for this tutorial. You'll find more information about the topics covered here in the How To tab, the Help, and our other online tutorials. Thanks for watching.